This is Adel Gasly. I'm going to present to you part four of the chapter about synchronous machines. In this part, I will cover the following topics. Equivalent circuit model and synchronous generator, phasor diagram, voltage regulations, and power flow and efficiency. Let us start with the equivalent circuit of a synchronous generator. We will cover the synchronous motor in the next part. As we have seen in the previous part, the excitation current IF generates a field flux VF. When the rotor is rotating, a back EMF EF is induced inside the armature winding. When the armature of the synchronous generator is loaded, an armature current IA flows in the armature winding and the load. This armature current produces an armature flux that is split into a leakage flux phi AL and an armature reaction flux phi AR. The armature reaction flux induces a back EMF AAR in the armature. Since the resultant flux in the air gap is the sum of the feed flux and armature reaction flux, the resultant air gap voltage ER is equal to EF plus EAR. Thus, the equivalent circuit of the synchronous generator can be drawn as shown here. Notice that the open circuit armature voltage is different from the loaded armature voltage because of the armature reaction effect. Notice also that the armature reaction voltage opposes the induced field voltage. In the rest of this chapter, we'll consider only cylindrical rotor type synchronous machines. Now, considering an equivalent armature reaction, reactance XAR, we can write the induced armature reaction voltage as minus JXAR multiplied by IA. Note that the minus sign accounts for the fact that the armature reaction opposes the field EMF EF. So we can represent the vectors of the armature current, armature reaction flux, and armature reaction voltage in the phasor form as shown in this figure. Notice that the induced EMF is always in quadrature and lagging the flux that caused it. From the resultant air gap voltage equation, we can obtain the excitation voltage EF as shown here. Because of the leakage reactants, there will be a further equivalent voltage drop inside the armature leading to this equation of the armature voltage. This can be represented by this additional circuit. Moreover, accounting for the voltage drop across the armature winding resistance RA, we can obtain the terminal voltage as given by this equation. This can be represented by this equivalent circuit. So, as you can notice, there are different voltages at different levels of the air gap and armature windings. Considering the synchronous reactance equal XS, which is equal to the sum of the armature reaction reactance and the leakage reactance, and the synchronous impedance ZS equal to the armature resistance RA plus J multiplied by XS, which is the synchronous reactance. Then we can redraw the equivalent circuit as shown here, where XS takes into account all the fluxes, including the magnetizing and leakage flux produced by the armature current. So now we have a simple equivalent circuit that represents the armature of the synchronous generator. Typical per unit values that represent an order of magnitudes are given in this table, where smaller machines refer to tens of kilovolt amp power ratings, and larger machines refer to tens of megavolt amp power ratings. The ranges of the parameters are provided in per unit. Recall that the per unit values of the parameters mean that we have one per unit voltage and one per unit current. So for instance, 0.1 per unit impedance means that 
If the rated current flows, it will produce a voltage drop of 0.1 or 10% of the rated voltage. In general, as the machine size increases, the per unit resistance decreases, but the per unit reactance increases. So the per phase equivalent circuit of the cylindrical synchronous generator can be represented as shown here. The voltage equations are developed here based on KVL. So RA here designates the armature resistance per phase, XS designates the synchronous reactance per phase, EF designates the generated EMF per phase, VT designates the generated terminal voltage per phase, and IA is the armature current per phase. To find the actual three-phase values of the voltages and currents, we need to consider the type of winding connection in star or delta depending on the case. To determine the equivalent circuit parameters, we need to conduct three tests. The open circuit test, the short circuit test, and the DC test. In the DC test, the DC resistance of the armature is measured. However, the effective resistance accounting for the skin effect and temperature must be deduced from the measured DC value by multiplying with a correction factor. This factor could be taken around 1.6. Let's see how the open circuit and short circuit tests are conducted and used for finding the other equivalent circuit parameters. We start with the open circuit test. During this test, the machine is driven at synchronous speed. Excitation current IF is varied and excitation voltage EF is measured. The open circuit characteristic EF versus IF is plot as shown in this figure. Notice the linear region and the saturation regions of this curve. Now, the excitation voltage would have changed along this air gap line if there were no magnetic saturation effect in the machine core. During the short circuit test, the machine is driven at synchronous speed. Excitation current IF is varied, and average armature current value IA of the three phase measured short circuit currents is calculated. The short circuit characteristic IA versus IF is plot as shown here. Note that the short circuit characteristic is a straight line. This is due to the fact that under short circuit conditions, the magnetic circuit does not saturate because the air gap flux remains at a low level. This can be explained as follows. Because the armature resistance is very small compared to the synchronous reactance, the armature current IA lags behind the excitation voltage EF by almost 90 degrees. The armature reaction MMF FA therefore opposes the field MMF FF and the resultant MMF FR is very small. The magnetic circuit therefore remains unsaturated even if both IF and IA are large. Also note from the equivalent circuit that the air gap voltage is ER which is equal to IA multiplied by RA plus JXAL. Now because RA and XAL are small, then at rated voltage the air gap voltage will be less than 20% of the rated voltage which means that unsaturated magnetic condition at short circuit operation. If the machine stays unsaturated, the excitation voltage EF will increase linearly with the excitation current IF along the air gap line, and therefore the armature current will increase linearly with the feed current. This demonstrated why we obtained a linear relationship between the excitation current and armature current during the short circuit condition.
Now let's see how we can find the unsaturated circuit parameters from the open and short circuit tests. For that we need to plot the two characteristics on the same plot as shown here, where the left vertical axis is the excitation voltage and the right axis is the armature current. After that we can draw the air gap line which is tangent to the linear part of the open circuit characteristic. Then we draw a vertical line intersecting point C on the open circuit characteristic which corresponds to rated terminal voltage VT. This vertical line intersects also the IF axis, the horizontal axis, at a certain point A and intersects the short circuit characteristic line at point B and the air gap line at point D. We then record the values of EDA and IBA. EDA is actually the induced voltage when a short circuit current IBA flows in the armature. We can calculate the unsaturated synchronous impedance as the ratio of EDA over IBA. On the other hand, we know that the synchronous impedance ZS is given also by this equation. So considering that the armature resistance RA is very small compared to the synchronous reactance XS, we can obtain the unsaturated value of the synchronous reactance XS as equal to EDA over IBA, which is ZS, unsaturated also. So as you can see, we were able to find the unsaturated value of the synchronous reactance from the open circuit characteristic and short circuit characteristics. However, during saturation operating condition, the saturated synchronous reactance takes a different value that we'll see how we can determine in the next slides. For the saturated parameters, we draw a vertical line that intersects the open circuit characteristic at point C. This line crosses IF axis at certain point A and crosses also the short circuit characteristic line at point B. Next, you draw the modified air gap line which intersects the open circuit characteristic at point C. Since the rated voltage is ECA and the corresponding short circuit current is IBA, then the saturated synchronous impedance is determined using this equation. Again, considering that the armature resistance is small compared to the synchronous reactance, we can obtain the saturated synchronous reactance as shown here. So when operating the machine on the saturation part of the magnetization curve, we use the saturated synchronous reactance value. Now let us see how we can draw the phasor diagram of a synchronous generator. We start with a lagging power factor case. Now to draw the phasor diagram, we start by drawing the terminal voltage on the horizontal axis as the reference for phase angles. Then we draw the armature current vector knowing the amplitude and phase angle of the armature current. In this case, the phase angle is negative because we consider that we have a lagging power factor. We draw the voltage drop across the armature resistance in phase with the armature current as shown here. Then we draw the voltage drop across the synchronous reactants which is leading the previous vector with a 90 degrees angle. Finally, we can draw the vector of the excitation voltage by linking the origin of the end of the JXSIA vector. So if you draw all vectors in a real scale, we can find the amplitude and phase angle of the excitation voltage. The phase angle delta of the excitation voltage, EF, in this case shows that the excitation voltage is leading the terminal voltage, VT. Notice that the terminal voltage amplitude is smaller than the excitation voltage because of voltage drop across the armature impedance. We can follow the same procedure and draw the phase diagram for a leading power factor. We'll find that the excitation voltage is still leading the terminal voltage. 
However, for leading power factor, the amplitude of the terminal voltage can be higher than the amplitude of the excitation voltage as shown in this figure. Similarly, we can obtain the phase diagram for unity power factor. You can notice that the angle delta is also positive here, which means that the excitation voltage is leading the terminal voltage. The terminal voltage amplitude is smaller than the excitation voltage. So we can conclude that for the generator operation, the excitation voltage is always leading the terminal voltage, so delta is positive. So we can conclude that for the generator operation, the excitation voltage is always leading the terminal voltage, so the angle delta is always positive. Now let us consider one performance indicator of a synchronous generator, which is the voltage regulation. The voltage regulation is defined as the rise in voltage when the load is reduced from full rated load to zero or no load. So it is expressed as V no load minus V full load divided by V full load. Multiply by 100% to get it as a percentage. Here VFL is the full load terminal voltage, which is the rated voltage, and VNL is the no load terminal voltage. Note that V no load is equal to the induced EMF, which leads to the following expression of the voltage regulation. The other performance indicator is the efficiency. But before we determine the efficiency, we need to first understand the power flow inside the machine from its input to its output. We start with the power flow inside the synchronous machine when it operates as a generator. In this case, the input power is mechanical and equal to the shaft torque multiplied by the speed in radian per second. Part of this input mechanical power will compensate for the rotational losses. The remaining power is going to be converted into electric power through electromechanical energy conversion. Part of this power is going to be dissipated as heat because of core loss, and another part is going to be also dissipated as a heat as copper loss inside the armature, which is 3 IA square RA where IA is the armature current, RA is armature resistance. The remaining power is the electrical output power, that is P out is equal 3 VT IA cosine phi, which is the power factor. Finally, we can obtain the efficiency as the ratio of the output electrical power over the input mechanical power. Moving to the motor operation, the input power in this case is electrical. Another part of this power is going to be dissipated as heat also because of core loss. Then the remaining power is going to be converted into mechanical power through electromechanical energy conversion. However, part of this developed power is going to compensate for the rotational losses. The remaining power is the mechanical output power that is on the shaft of the machine and developed for a mechanical load. Finally, the efficiency is the ratio of the output mechanical power over the input electrical power. This is the end of this part. Thank you for watching this video.